I'm joined now by Troy Stangeron. He is the Senior Director for Congressional Affairs and Trade at the Korea Economic Institute. Let's start with uh, today's developments. And I, I, I truncated 26 seconds from the U.S. President. He said uh, the pending summit with North Korea's Kim Jong-un, well, there's a chance it will work out, a substantial chance it won't work out, but it doesn't mean it won't work out over a period of time. There's a good chance the meeting will be held. Uh, you got a lot of options to choose from there. Um, what do you make of all of this? I actually think this is a good sign. Um, right now, we have this deadline of June 12th, and we've seen North Korea sort of pull back recently. And I think what this demonstrates is President Trump is committed to the process, even if that process won't happen on June 12th. So rather than the date being what's driving it, it to me indicates that he wants the substance to drive it. So if we can get the details right for the summit by June 12th, I think it'll happen then. If not, just because it doesn't happen on June 12th, I think what he's saying doesn't mean it won't happen, but it just may happen later. It's interesting uh, in business, I've heard so many people say, yeah, under promise, over deliver. It seems like he over promised. Now it appears he's under delivering the messaging on this. Uh, it hasn't been put together well, has it? Well, I think the challenge you have with North Korea is, you know, there's clearly skepticism about whether they'll denuclearize. Um, we've kind of gone very quickly on this process. You know, if you think just back, you know, six months ago, the North Koreans had just finished their last ICBM test. They had talked, you know, all year long about how they would never get up the nuclear weapons. So we're in this point to where it's like, well, is this real or is it not real? And I think this is where the messaging becomes difficult because we haven't seen enough yet to know that what we're doing actually is substantive. But it's interesting, uh, you, you know, you're hearing from, uh, in Nathan's report, uh, people in the ROK saying, look, John Bolton poisoned the well. But, uh, but I went back and picked up an article that you wrote in October of 2017. The headline was, Forget Diplomacy with North Korea if Trump decertifies the Iran deal. Do you think it's a convergence of all these things? I mean, is that the wrong message to be sending to, to, to Kim right before you sitting down with him in Singapore? Yeah, I think, you know, some people will say that withdrawing from the Iran deal shows that we won't take, you know, a bad deal, quote unquote. But I think it also tells Kim Jong-un, you have to have better assurance than the Iranians from the United States that, you know, you have to, in essence, the North Koreans have to get a better deal, too. And I'm not sure that's the signal we want to send because it undermines the confidence for the talks going forward. What about uh, the messages from Kim? I mean, the, the four prisoners sent back uh, with Pompeo. You've got reporters we just saw, Hong Pong. They're, they're, they're going to be taking him. They're going to be destroying this site. I mean, are the mess is the messaging different, do you think, coming from the DPRK? I know there's always this skepticism in Washington whether or not your their messaging is legitimate, but but some of the steps being taken seem to be goodwill gestures. I think the North Koreans have tried to make all the right moves. In essence, you know, they've taken the things off the table. You know, having not except for the recent exercises uh, on the Air Force side, complained about exercises. They've taken and released the you know Americans they were holding. They're taking and they're going to take and do this, and it is probably more symbolic because they're not going to allow nuclear scientists to come in and actually test the site but at least it is a step forward. So they're doing the things that you need to do. And I think part of this is that it puts pressure on the United States because now that they've done all of these things and they've said, we don't want the U.S.-Korea alliance to end, in essence, that you know, it makes it more difficult for President Trump to maybe not accept a deal. You, you say it shouldn't be driven by a date, and, and one can't argue that. I, you got to get together when it's right. But, but Moon Jae-in is here undoubtedly trying to keep things on track. What's going to be his message in Washington? I think what he's going to essentially try to tell President uh, Trump is that, you know, you have to understand Kim Jong-un has concerns about the United States as well. He said in private to me, he said in private to Secretary Pompeo that he does want to denuclearize. You know that this is something that they're serious about. And so what we need to do is try and take and keep this on track. You know, maybe it does take a little bit longer, but let's keep the process moving forward because as you yourself have said, this is something that you think is going to happen. Troy, thanks so much.